Hey, welcome back to 65 Drums. My name is Justin. So today I wanna to talk about the Pearl Emerge. Why this drum set crashed and burned in such a quiet way. I say that because uh, a lot of people apparently don't even know this drum set exists. Even though it was made by one of the largest drum companies in the world in partnership with Korg, a very prominent keyboard company, but no one apparently bought this thing. Now, what do I mean by this drum set flopped? What I'm saying is that the overall interest level of this drum set appears to be incredibly low compared to the previous iteration, the Pearl E-Pro Live. They strung that drum set along for nine years in a ton of different configurations, and a bunch of people bought it. Also, I've noticed that like nobody comments or messages me about this drum set. They just have zero interest about it. I don't see many people making drum covers with this kit, not many posts on the different Facebook groups out there with thousands of members of people showing off their kit. Uh, on Instagram, it's almost completely non-existent from that platform, except for this absolute beast. All right, so before we jump into the list of reasons why this drum set did not do well, just wanna mention, I like this drum set. It does a lot of things right, and I always enjoy sitting down to play this. I played a prototype and two finished versions of this kit. I've talked to people from Pearl and from Korg. Like, I, I like this drum set quite a bit. They could turn this around maybe if they lowered the price significantly and did a couple of other things, but until that happens, I feel like this drum set does not have a great life ahead of it. Okay, so the first reason why I feel like the drum set didn't do too well is that it launched too late. If they launched it in 2017 or 2018 when they announced it, the drum set could have had a couple of years by itself without having a ton of competition. All they really would have had to compete against is the ATV A drums line, but they didn't actually arrive in the United States until 2020. And what else came out in 2020? The Roland VAD 500 series. And on top of that, F Note just came out with a bunch of brand new kits around this price range, which are excellent. Yamaha just released a bunch of new drum sets the other day, which also looked pretty darn good. And that's not even touching on all the custom build competition that's been here all along, like Drum Tech, Jobeki, Field, Diamond Drums, or even uh, Hawk Drums. Now, the second reason why this drum set didn't do too well is that Elisis finally got their act together with the Elisis Strike Pro SE in 2020. Around this price range, the Elisis Strike Pro SE, while not perfect, it does have some significant flaws. It just uh, catches the eye of the average drummer more than the Pearl Emerge. It didn't come with enough drums or cymbals. Pearl is kind of the underdog in the electronic drum industry. They don't have the picture perfect track record, okay? They don't have the fan base of Alesis or Roland or Yamaha or even two box. They don't even have a two box sized fan base. So when you don't have a giant fan base, you have to earn fans. And how do you earn fans? By over delivering. And their way of over delivering could have come in the form of a drum set like this promo photo. I feel like if that drum set sold for $4,000, people would have been more forgiving and they might have actually given it a second look but they launched it with one crash symbol. You can't launch with one crash symbol unless you're Roland. Like Roland's the only company that can get away with that crap. You have to give your customers more components than that. And this leads us to talk about the overall pricing strategy. This is another really major area where Pearl messed up. They decided to price it at around $4,000 to $4,200. Pricing has gone all over the place because of COVID and the shipping problems. I think the drum set is now selling for about $4,500 or $4,600. So the pricing has just gone up. A lot of people would have rather seen it being priced at $3,000. If they had not included all the extra drums and cymbals I'm advocating for, but just priced it lower at $3,000, then the drum set could have had a fighting chance, maybe. But at $4,000, you can't go toe to toe with Roland on pricing. They have too strong of a fan base. You have to undercut it at least a little bit. And I feel like this is one of the main things that people always point out. The drum set was too expensive for what they were offering. Okay, so this next problem is a huge one. It's the fact that they didn't do enough advertising for this drum set at all. Even Roland knows that even with their large fan base, they have to pump tons of money into advertising in order to make an impact. 
and Pearl just didn't spend the necessary amount of money to show this drum set to enough drummers. I recently did a poll for you guys on the YouTube community tab asking what was the biggest reason why this drum set flopped. Something that really shocked me was that a third of my audience that voted on this poll did not know this drum set existed. And again, this is a audience that knows more than the average person about electronic drums. Another reason that might've turned away some people from buying this drum set was how closed of an ecosystem that it was. This wasn't like a Roland drum set or an Elisa's drum set where you can get a lot of other mesh drum sets to work with the module. Now, in this case, Pearl was very much a walled garden, a small ecosystem in and of itself. This drum set wasn't really meant to work with anything but what it came with. Another problem is that the drum set didn't look quite as cool as its predecessor. The Pearl E Pro Live, despite its flaws, looked pretty nice. It was a cool looking electronic drum set for its time. Moving ahead to its successor, the Pearl Emerge decided to ditch the full acoustic shells. They decided to go with these like electronic drum pads and a full sized acoustic kick drum or a kick drum pad, depending on which option that you bought. And that's fine, but it goes against the industry trend. A lot of drummers were looking towards larger shells. Not everybody, there's a small contingent of people that wanted to have smaller drum pads, but a lot of people wanted to have a more acoustic looking electronic drum set and Pearl went against the trend and they suffered for it. They also decided to put these giant fake chrome plastic wedges on the cymbals for literally no reason at all. It just does not look that great. It looks super fake and it just looks tacky to me. Now the next thing that I wanna point out is more of a broad concept. Every electronic drum company knows they need to have a differentiator, a wow factor that sets them apart from the rest of the industry and makes people wanna buy their stuff instead of other people's stuff. For Roland, their big thing is the fact that they have the digital snare, the digital ride, and now the digital hi-hats, and the fact they have lots of custom modeling inside of the module. That's their big thing that makes them different. If you take a look at Alesis, it's the fact that they're trying to champion cheaper, larger electronic drums that sound surprisingly good. So they're trying to make flagship killer drum sets everywhere they can. When it came to Pearl themselves with the E Pearl Live, they worked hard to make that drum set a little bit different. It had metal cymbals initially when most companies did not. You could remove the drum pads and play it as an acoustic drum set. So you were essentially getting two drum sets for the price of one. And then finally, the module, which is very similar to the Elisa's DM10, let you import more sounds from their online sound store. So not everything here was like revolutionary or unique, but they cobbled together a lot of little things that made the, this drum set different than the competition. Now, skipping forward 10 years, we have the Pearl Emerge, the successor to the Pearl E Pearl Live. And here's the big ace up its sleeve on this particular drum set. The DSP Digital Signal Processing Audio Sensor captures the initial strike and head response simultaneously as the second sensor triggers the PCM pulse code modulation sound file. The algorithm expertly blends the two sound sources together, and for the first time ever in electronic drums, it captures every nuance of the stick strike, regardless of where you strike the head or dynamic level. As far as I can tell, they're taking some of the technology from Korg's electronic drum pads that they've been making for a long time, great hand percussion pads that everybody loves, and putting that on the snare of this new electronic drum set from Pearl. Now this was the really big feature that they were hyping up when they were showing off this drum set, and it was met with crickets. Like no one seemed to care about this feature, me included. I, I didn't feel like it completely transformed my drumming experience at all. Like I didn't really notice that much, to be honest. Uh, what I actually liked more about the drum set was the drum head material themselves. Like the snare and toms had this really, really thick you know, multi, I think it was like six plies of material and it felt incredible to play on. I love the drum heads on the Pearl Emerge and that was my big takeaway that I liked so much about the drum set. I didn't really care about the Korg, you know, technology thing they integrated and apparently no one else did. Not only did they bring in a feature no one really cared about, but they had to pay Korg to get that feature, making the whole drum set more expensive to manufacture. So here's another way that Pearl shot themselves in the foot when it came to the drum module side of things. Sometime around 2016 or so, they came out with the Pearl Mimic Pro. This module is freaking fantastic. Even after all this time, it still goes toe to toe with the best modules any company has come out with. A very, very advanced module. So they came out with that. And then later, they came out with the Pearl Emerge and didn't take any of the lessons they had learned from the Pearl Mimic. They didn't take any of the technology, they didn't take any of the cool samples they had, and instead they worked with Korg, and they thought that Korg was going to be their ticket to success. I don't think anyone expected there to be a $2,000 module on the Emerge. It wouldn't make any sort of monetary sense. But they could have made a dumped down version, a Mimic Lite, if you will. 
you know, only have half the sounds, no touchscreen, all buttons sort of based, and it could have been a fantastic addition to the drum set versus the Pearl Emerge. Now, of course, there's a lot of other things that contributed to this drum set not doing well. A lot of people weren't that impressed with the sounds, but I feel like the final big thing that did this drum set in is that Pearl didn't make Guitar Center or Sam Ash or any of the other big music chains carry this drum set as a floor model. Everybody sold the drum set, like you could find it at Sweetwater, you could find it at Sam Ash, you could find it at Musician's Friend, whatever. But if you actually went to the store, it was nothing but Roland and Yamaha and Elisa's drum sets. Uh, you couldn't find this drum set to actually test it out and play it yourself. And when you don't have any sort of access to play a drum set that costs $4,000, you might be a little bit hesitant to order this drum set right away especially when there's not a lot of buzz about it. If I go to a big music store that has a dozen electronic drum sets and there's not a single Pearl electronic drum set there, I might assume as a new to electronic drums person that Pearl doesn't make electronic drums. It's not like a TD-27 versus a TD-50. You kind of know what a TD-50 is like if you play a TD-27 because they're all in the same sort of range. But with Pearl, this drum set was a one of a kind. There was nothing else to compare it to. And if you couldn't sit down and play it, you had no idea what you were getting into. There's also something to be said about having a complete lineup of electronic drums. There's a reason why Roland, Elisis, Yamaha, they all have a bunch of different drum sets at different price ranges. And the more hours you sink into looking at Roland's 20 different drum sets, comparing them and trying to figure out which one that you like, the more likely you are to buy it, versus just having to decide whether or not one drum set from one company is right for you. Now, something else that people might point out is that this drum set launched in Europe in 2019 and then in the United States in 2020, just in time for the pandemic and the global chip shortage and the manufacturing delays hitting everybody at the same time. It was not a great time to launch an electronic drum set, and that probably contributed to this drum set's poor sales. Now, on the surface, it seems like a decent argument, but it falls apart the moment that you talk to anybody that was selling electronic drums during that time and during this time right now. The pandemic did not hurt electronic drum sales. If anything, sales might have been even up a little bit. Check out this video that I did with eDrum Center where they talked about what it was like to sell electronic drums during this time. Okay, so in this video, I've been pretty negative about this drum set, but I don't wanna be overly negative because I've really enjoyed playing this drum set every single time that I've sat down to play it. Pearl spent a lot of money in development of this. So when a very big company spends tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars on R&D and development, trying to sell a drum set and they stumble, it's not really great for the industry because you know you wanna have as many good competitive options as possible. Now throughout this video, I feel like I've been talking about this drum set in the past tense a lot. You can still definitely go and buy it. It hasn't been discontinued as of my knowledge at the moment but I feel like that isn't that far on the horizon if it continues down this path. I do like the drum set. I just think that it's priced a little bit too high. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Am I being too hasty or am I completely wrong? Let me know your thoughts. Also, if you wanna see another video like this, check out my video about the Enfused Inspire and why that drum set flopped as well. I think you might find that interesting. Have an awesome day and I'll see you all in a few.